All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Christian Hanahar, and you're listening to, at this moment in time, the newest episode of the You Need a Horror podcast. I'm excited to be back. Um, we've already got, uh, we've got him again, but, but we'll save the best for last. I feel like, I, the funny thing is, Nick, I feel like I haven't talked to you in a while. Maybe it's just the holidays. Everybody's been doing their thing. Busy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, busy. Uh the the COVID ran rampant through my family. Luckily, I didn't get it, but uh, so that derailed a lot of Christmas plans. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, after talking to my attorney and getting with Victor Miller and Sean S. Cunningham, we got uh, the opportunity to get back on the You Need a Horror podcast. We didn't have to sue Christian, so I'm back, guys. Um, glad to be back. Maybe this is a Southern thing. Have you heard of the lawyer Morris Bart? Have y'all seen no. his? Piz, have, do you, oh, okay. he's no. this lawyer i mean he's got this massive firm and he's all through louisiana texas and all that and he's got these he's got the greatest you know road signs whatever, whatever you call them those big you know billboards. and it's yeah mm-hmm. billboards and it's him smiling and it just says one call that's all so that's who <laughs> that's who sean cunningham should have called for the lawsuit because morris bart would have you know got him a, a, a fair a fair check yeah. But yeah, no, glad to be back. I, I did. I did enjoy the episode uh, with steak sauce on uh, Return of the Living Dead two and three. So obviously, as we said, things didn't really line up scheduling wise. You wanted to get that out. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back, man. I'm glad to have you back. It's going to be a great episode. Pissed. I mean, dude, I don't know. You, you don't have to admit to me that you do these podcasts out of pity for me <laughs> or not. I just want to say, like, it really is awesome that every time I reach out to you, you're just like, let's do it, dude. Like, it really is awesome. And I think you're going to have a good time today. How are you doing, dude? I'm doing very well. I um, I'm doing good. I'm still recovering from the holidays. Uh, I've got I'm still in the the throes of the holiday hangover, but I'm, I'm getting better. Did it fly by for you? I mean, the whole month just the seems whole, to come and go. Yeah. Like this whole year's flown by for me, but yeah, December was, is just like a, it's like a blur at this point. It doesn't I mean, Christmas was only five days ago and I mean, it feels like it was, you know, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't seem like it was. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's too fast. 2021 thumbs up, thumbs down or thumbs in the middle. Uh, Nick I would a thumbs up. I would that probably, was... I'd probably say thumbs in the middle. I mean, it was okay. It had a, it, it, it had its ups and downs. I mean, it, you know, it, if we're talking, well, I just said thumbs up because if we're talking purely from an entertainment standpoint, when it came to movies and TV shows and stuff, I thought we got some really good stuff this year, especially because a lot of it was supposed to come out in 2020, and then we just got you know bombarded with. Uh, material this year so um personally yeah thumbs in the middle but you know movies wise yeah thumbs up hmm. actually i actually thought last year was a better year for for horror particularly but yeah i it, it was uh i guess it's just for me i'm i i am like a sucker for the theater experience and i didn't get back into the theater <laughs> until this year and I just mm. started going to the, th- I mean, Spiral, Godzilla, like I-, I was, I was there for every big release. So it was kind of nice to get back to that sense of normalcy. So, mm. but yeah. I feel you. Yeah. There's, there's definitely, there was some more normalcy added to the, uh, added to uh, 2021. So what about you, Christian? I'm thinking about it, man. Um, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic. So I'd say th- I'd say thumbs up for, for the year, just in general and life and everything. No deaths in the family, uh, no major accidents, no crazy financial problems. Uh, besides air conditioning, the air, air conditioner. conditioner. Yeah. But you know what, dude, I got through it. I mean, I, yeah. I was literally scraping beans for a few weeks, you know, uh, and the mailman loved it because he did not have to get his ass out of the mail car to hand me those Amazon packages of Blu-rays and stuff. But <laughs> You know what, man? Life, when life gives you lemons, you just deal with it. And uh, this podcast was perfect at the time. I was like, I need something to take my mind off this crap because, you know, those air conditioned guys are, it's highway robbery. You know, they oh, just yeah. show, just sh- they charge you for the gas just to arrive to your house, this bastard. You know, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. But uh, let's end the year. It's funny, dude. I, I think back, you know, to, 
to uh 2012 it was late 2012 maybe early 20 it was right at the end of the year and i went to go see your next and i saw in the previews texas chainsaw 3d and it was start the new year with a familiar face and i loved that it's a little cheese it's actually really cheesy mm -hmm. the tagline but i love it uh so why don't we end the year with a familiar face. I just think it's fitting. We got a lot of, we got a lot going on. You know, we got a new Texas chainsaw film coming out. Um, I mean, I mean, what the hell? I mean, why not talk about Texas chainsaw Piz? I know that, you know, you love this franchise dearly. What really prompted me to, to kickstart doing this episode, you know, cause I don't want to just, just knock them all out in a row. I really want to try to space some of these cool memory videos out. But when you did your room tour, which was so cool i mean it was so cool to see the room with the way it looks now your texas chainsaw section i was like i think it's time you know i just think it's time that really that really got me in the spirit so to speak i mean what do you think is it texas mm. chainsaw time right now sure absolutely mm -hmm. nick you ready to rock i am ready to rock the buzz right. is back that's right yes. the buzz is back uh so if if you've seen the crystal lake memories episode i guess we're going to call this the saws family or the buzz is back i don't know i'll let piz decide i'll let him i'll let him sit on that till the end of the episode he'll okay. be able to decide the name of the episode but we're not going to do the entire series today because i really enjoyed spacing uh, the, some of the films out and talking about them so what i wanted to do was go through the f what I, I guess you would call the first run of the texas chainsaw films we're going to do texas chainsaw one to the next generation um and we're going to start with the earliest memories of the film the first time you heard about the film whatever comes to mind excuse me and piz i would love for you to start man 1974 toby hooper's the texas chainsaw massacre what is wh where do you i mean where do you start with this because I, I i know about the friday the 13th now but i don't know what you're going to say here i don't know where this starts for you um it kind of starts it <clears throat> When I was growing up and I'd go to the video store with my mother, uh, for me to rent a movie, I would have to take her the box. She'd peruse it and she'd either give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Just about everything was given the thumbs down. <laughs> and then um, I finally, you know, got to see my first Friday the 13th. I've told this story, but my stepdad came home with part seven on VHS and my mother mildly objected. And, but eventually she gave in and, and that, became my that opened the door to everything at that point except texas chainsaw massacre for some reason my mother was still anti-texas chainsaw massacre because I, and I remember her saying i'm not gonna let you rent a movie about people being cut up with a chainsaw and so it wasn't until I'd seen all the Friday the 13th, all the Halloweens, all the nightmares, all the big franchises and everything else, just about everything under the sun at that point before, I don't know why, I'm trying to, how old, I was in probably middle school, late middle school, before I finally rented Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I guess it had kind of gone off my radar for a while, and then um, I don't remember what you know spurred me to, to to rent it but um there it was that old media vhs with that awesome artwork on it uh looked like it had been rented a million times the box was just you know sun faded and just a mess and uh rented it brought it home and I, it blew my freaking mind blew my freaking mind it was unlike anything i'd ever seen before um and I mean, I just fell in love with it and it's, it's my favorite, um, horror movie. I think it's, I really think it's the, the first contemporary, uh, slasher film. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just an amazing film period, not just a horror film, but just a great film period. What scares you the most seeing that film for the first time? Is it the music? Is it the, the, the 16 millimeter voyeuristic look of the film? Is it a combination of things? I think it's just a combination of everything. It was very, um, it was, yeah. I mean, it, it looked very, it was very dirty. <laughs> it was very, I mean, again, this was on a VHS tape that had been rented probably a million times. So you add, the VHS wear to the grain and the griminess that's already in that movie. 
And um, I don't know, it, 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 it just, it, it hit us, it hit a nerve that like Friday the 13th and nightmare and Halloween just didn't quite hit uh, in me at least. But yeah, I think it was, it was the whole thing was the, 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 you can't even call it a score. It's just people hitting, you know, banging on pots and pans and you know what I mean? Toby Hooper, like, um, inside of a piano running, a, I forget what he said, but he, he ran something across the chords inside the piano to get like every little increment in the, in the chord to, to, to ring out to the way it looks, you know, that, that, that 16 millimeter, um, grainy griminess there's also something about it where it just looks hot like you you just like you can almost smell the sweat and the that that you know country air it's like you know you can smell the cattle and the the cow poop and it's all it's all it's just i don't know it's 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 an immersive experience the texas chainsaw massacre mm. without question nick What's the first time you see this movie? <clears throat> um, I saw O3 first when I was 10, when that came out. And um, that movie scared the crap out of me. And um, my friend's mom was like, that's a remake. You know, like they're, they're, the original came out years and years ago. And uh, we went and rented it with their dad. And we watched it. And almost every point Piz made is basically like... I agree. And I'm in lockstep with him. Like it is a movie that although for me, Halloween is my Holy grail. This movie does things Halloween couldn't ever dream to do. And I feel like part of that is just the depravity of this movie. I mean, there's so much about this movie that is just so messed up. And you're like, this came out in 74. Like, really? Like I would understand if, you know, this was, more modern because some of those, I mean, some of those things in the mid two thousands, especially really were touched on a lot more. It was almost normal to see super weird movies like that, but 74 like, but yeah, the color palette's fantastic. It feels very hot. It feels like Texas summer. Um, the, the 16 millimeter look has, it, it's always been one of the things that stood out probably the most to me. And I'm still someone that thinks that, with that look, somebody like Rob Zombie could have done a great Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I mean, I feel like that's the sandbox he should have played in. Um, I mean, okay, but, he certainly loves 16 millimeter too, considering yes. he used it for Halloween too. Exactly. Which and is Devil's not, Rejects. And I, yeah, and I love both of those movies. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it just it was very unsettling when I first saw it, and even still watching it, it's just it's unsettling, and not an unsettling in the way of like I can't watch this. It's just unsettling where you walk away and you feel like it was like a traumatic experience almost. <laughs> like whether it's killing Franklin, whether it's the family, whether there, there's so many aspects about this movie that just stand out that it's like, dude, that's wild. Like that's just <laughs> wild. So way ahead of its time, took a lot of risk. It risks. It's a ballsy movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. What else is there to say? But, you know, I, I'd like to I'd like to add a couple of things, too. I, I think the 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 character of Leatherface was really um, fascinating to me, too. The fact that um, you know, the, the first time you see him in the movie, I mean, what an entrance. Um, Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, the fact that he's wearing the flesh of his victims as, as, as a mask and he's like, you know, the they're all the, the whole family's cannibals and uh, I don't, there's something about that. That's very uh, disturbing. Um, but also too the, you know, it's the, um, the legacy of Texas chainsaw massacre is, is, is different than the film because people think of Texas chainsaw massacre as being this ultra gory bloodbath. Like my mother, my mother was like, Oh, you, you know, it's going to, you're going to watch people being cut up with a chainsaw. Or even like my girlfriend, I tried to convince my girlfriend to watch it. And for a long time, she wouldn't watch it because she just envisioned, well, I mean, if, if it's about a guy wearing a, a mask made of human flesh and he carries a chainsaw and he's a cannibal, it's, it, it's definitely, it's, it's not going to be light. It's not going to be, you know, the feel good hit of the summer. Um, but I would try to convince her. It's, it's really not like that. It's not like that. It's not a bloodbath. It's not gory. It's not, you know, but when people think of that movie, that's the images that they, that they get in their mind and that's not the movie at all the movie's really not gory the movie's really not 
uh, graphic as far it, as the violence is concerned. It's 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 what the movie does to you it, mentally and emotionally that's kind of um, damaging, really. It's in your face in different ways than yeah. than your your um, schlock and your gore. It's in your face in many different ways than that, and I think that's why it sticks with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. And then, I mean, like when I finally got my girlfriend to watch it, she was, she felt sorry for Leatherface. She was like, <laughs> I, I wanted Leatherface to kill them all. You know, that poor, that poor man. Right. Um, and I mean, really, when you think about it, I mean, what is, you know, Leatherface is just a, you know. He's a victim. All, all he, all he knows is cooking for the family. He was, uh, you know, they were a whole family of um, uh, slaughterhouse workers who got mechanized out of business. And uh, that's all Leatherface knows. Now, all of a sudden, he's got all these hippies in his house. You know, like, where are all these freaking hippies coming from? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. There, there's um, there's really a lot to explore about that movie. And one thing people don't talk about is how funny that film is. The, it, it's really funny. Like, the grandpa character is hilarious. <laughs> and the interactions between the family, um, like at the dinner table scene, some of it's hilarious, you know, when they're talking about how grandpa was the, the best killer of them all, but the, you know, he would have had this, he would have had some kind of record and had the hook and pull gang, not, you know, passed out or something. It was just, just, it, there's so much, it's the look, you know, look what your brother did to the door. Um, it, it, it's a really funny movie. Part of, part of Toby Hooper's, um, part of the reason why he wanted to make that movie was, you know, uh, the, the horrors of his own family get together. So, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, there's so much going on in that movie. And a lot of it, people don't seem to, to, I don't know, uh, grasp like, like the humor and like the fact that it's not bloody. It's not gory. Really. It's not a bloodbath at all. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to rack my brain looking back on it. The first time I can remember now, watching the film top to top to bottom as odd as it sounds was right after Katrina. And, and this was the thing where I knew about the film, my, my, my entire childhood because you know, the, the character Leatherface and all that it, it's Mecca. It's, it's pop culture. You know, it was Leatherface, Freddie, all that. And I remember seeing guys dressed up as Leatherface when I was a kid during Halloween time in new Orleans. And I remember right after Katrina, probably about I say right after five, six, seven months when we decided to stay where we're living now, we got cable hooked up. Um, and this was before there was anything like online television. Obviously this is 2000 late 2005, 2006, early 2006. I remember my brother and me flipping the channels on a Friday night, got home from school. Parents are going to bed. We're so happy. We're in a house again. We're relaxing and of all chan of all things, MTV had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on. Mm. And I remember that was the first time we watched it. And it really, it really, it really screwed me up. The thing I took away the most from that film that really just pushed me back into the couch when I watched the original was the opening shot of that. Oh man, it's brutal heat. You can almost smell that body. It's that uh, corpse on the gravestone wrapped around it. And it just terrified me. And the scene that really creeped me out was the hitchhiker in the van, because, you know, I'm thinking to myself, where do you go? The van's moving. Do you jump? Where do you go? If you're, if you're part of this group, do you jump out of that? You just know where to go. And there's a psychopath in there. I just remember that really just mortified me. I, I didn't sleep for nights from that movie. And, you know, you talk about that humor. It's so interesting. Toby, and you, 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 he's so, so right. It's a funny movie. But that damn music doesn't make it funny to me. It's fucking scary. <laughs> that music just makes it so scary to me. You know, differently from the way part two is from what we're talking about. But as obviously as I've gotten older and I've seen the film a ton now. Yeah, I, I, I love the humor. I think it's hilarious. The, the cook is my is one of my favorites. I love him in, in the in the first movie. But that music, Jesus, man. I mean, you know, John Carpenter's got that da -na -na, da -na -na, and Toby Hooper's got that meow sound. <laughs> That's yeah. just so, yeah. it's terrifying, man. I mean, yeah. the trailer for the new movie coming out next month, 
What's the first sound you hear when the trailer starts? Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, that, that sound is iconic. Yeah, that sound yeah. is married to the movie. You just hear that sound and you know, OK, you Texas know, Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, you know, right. you know, and I, you know, it's funny. The only thing I can also remember is I remember we went to Blockbuster maybe a year later. And it's so funny. I became the horror fanatic, but my brother was legitimately the one showing me these classic movies for the first time. Like, Hey dude, let's watch this. And we went to blockbuster and they were phasing out their VHS tapes and we bought, and I never knew what happened to it. I think my mom was going through our closets and just got rid of it. We bought leather Texas chainsaw massacre and Texas chainsaw massacre two on VHS. And they were these beautiful clam shells. And I, mm-hmm. I'm sure it was the original artwork. I, I've subsequently got a media tape again, but I remember when I, we bought them, my mom was like, she, she didn't shelter us, but like, she never, when you don't really see a movie like that, kind of like what, what, what you said your girlfriend thought about the movie. When you don't really watch the movie and you think of what the movie pr- probably is, it's way worse in a sense. So like my mom did not know we bought that. My dad just gave us he he took us to blockbuster and we were like dad can we get a movie or whatever and he's like yeah here's 20 bucks go in there and instead of rent movies we just bought those vhs tapes and my dad didn't know any he didn't care and so i would hide the vhs tapes in the closet when we would want to watch them (laughs) and they seemed just doing that made the film seem even scarier sometimes when i would get ready for school and i'd open the closet and there'd be a little bit of sunlight hitting the bottom corner of the closet you would see those vhs tapes in there it made it seem so there was some some kind of creepiness to that i just i cherish those times i never knew what happened to those vhs tapes i wish i still had them my mom probably got rid of them but Again, I mean, my brother's been with me through so many of these great first time watches of these classics. So great memories with Texas Chainsaw. Well, it it, it made it taboo. That's kind of what because, you know, like I could I could rent any other movie. But for some reason, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was off limit. So that that made it, you know, that made it kind of taboo. There's something about this movie that people don't want you to watch. So, right. so you, you want to watch it more. But I I think also, too, there's something about the title that's Mm -hmm. very evocative. You put those three words together, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's just like, I don't want to go there. (laughs) There's something about those three words together. You're just like, yeah, there's that's that's bad. I'm not going there. Yep. It's 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 it's, it's the whole originally it was supposed to be called head cheese and then it got changed to leather face and then eventually and, and Toby Hooper thought that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was the most ridiculous title but I mean the the title's now part of that movie's legacy yeah yeah man now Piz I don't know we it's it, there's no point in ranking these I mean because we're really we're really just going through the, our memories and God knows I tell you what we will we can still rank them how about that because I don't know where you guys are going to place two three or four God knows we're all putting number one, the original at number one, but you know, we could, we could do that for the end, but, um, Piz, what about Texas chain? I, I, I love this movie. Texas chainsaw massacre two was, no, was Texas chainsaw massacre. The first Texas chainsaw you saw. I actually think part three was the first. I'm pretty sure part three was the first one I saw. Okay. Well, where do but we go re- for two? I remember reading about two in a TV guide and the review of it said something to the effect of uh, it's a cut rate sequel. And I didn't understand what does cut rate mean? And I remember I asked my mom, what does cut rate mean? And she was like, um, it means it's not good. And I was like, Oh, that's too bad. And then um, I believe I rented it. Um, and, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre too had, a, had a big impact on me too, in a different way than the first one did because Chainsaw two is exactly what most people thought that they were going to get out of Chainsaw one, it, as far as the blood and the gore and just being over the top with the blood and the gore. And, um, I think it's part two is maybe even nastier and grimier than the first one. Um, but there was something about 
There was something about it. I remember watching it for the first time on VHS, and at the end of it, when Carolyn Williams is doing her chainsaw dance, and it ended, just kind of sitting there for a minute, going like, "I don't know if I like this or not." It it, it was really, um, it really kind of it, it it really. Uh, I think you, uh, what you're doing right now is basically exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was speechless. Yeah. I was kind of speechless. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, o over the years I've revisited the movie countless times and I mean, I love it. I think it's, it's, it's the, the gore and the comedy, the comedy is very in your face because, you know, Toby was upset that people didn't get the comedy in the first film. So he wanted the comedy to be right in your face. And, um, yeah, I love the whole thing of like, you know, Leatherface is like coming of age and he's having those feelings for for stretch and he doesn't quite, you know, do I, I want, I want to kill her, but at the same time, I, I want to do something else with her. Um, and, you know, Chop Top is phenomenal. I mean, Bill Mosley just, you know, I mean, he steals the show. Jim Seedow is back as the cook and he's the Texas chili you know, champion guy. I, I mean, there's just so much in that movie. That's a Dennis freaking Hopper. I mean, my God, ah, uh, the, the, the whole, you know, with him and the chainsaws. Yeah. That, that movie is like an acid trip. Um, I'm sure there was probably some acid consumed making that movie, probably some acid consumed writing that movie. Um, mm -hmm. it's a trip, man. It's a trip. I, I, I love it to death, but the first time around, yeah, it, it took me a while to kind of like, you know, grasp like what I watched. It was like a new genre of music. You were probably hearing for the first time, huh? Something like that. Yeah. That's a good analogy. Yep. That's a good analogy. Nick, you remember your first time seeing <clears throat> TCM too? I do. Um, it was the second to last one I saw. Um, and I don't know why. Uh, maybe because it is one of those movies that I feel like, although now has a bigger following and bigger fan base, I feel like it was for a while kind of a black sheep because um, it was so different. And there was a big gap between the two films. You know, normally a sequel doesn't take that, a direct sequel take that long to be made. Um, but I... I <laughs> I love it now. When I first watched it, it was pretty much, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it was pretty much the same. I genuinely had no idea how I felt about it. I loved the gore. I loved Dennis Hopper. I loved uh, uh, Caroline Williams. I loved, you know, Bill Mosley. Um, I mean, even just from the opening uh, with the dudes in the car on the, you know, on the highway and stuff, you just know like what kind of movie you're going to get. Um, but it was just so different. Um, I just didn't know how I felt about it. And uh, watched it again after that. And I just really embraced it for what it was. And, and you know, I can happily say that I love the movie now. I mean, it's like there's some things in your first watch, you know, like what you were talking about is just like the, you know, air humping with the, you know, kind of with the chainsaw that like your first watch, you're kind of like, this is weird. <laughs> um, and like uh, the cook and the, the whole chili cook off thing, like that whole bit is just like, it's not even necessary, but like, and so you're watching it the first time you're like, what is this? But like over time, you're like, this is awesome. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I also like that Toby Hooper was like, like, yeah, I'll come back and do another one, but I'm not going to do the same thing over again. Um, like I want to just throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And mm -hmm. I wish directors would do that more uh, with sequels. Um, you know, if they're going to come back, try something new, um, you know, keep the same DNA there, but just, I don't know, just make it weird, man. Um, so yeah, this ironically, these movies for me, these four that we're going to talk about when you're talking about a ranking Christian, it's going to go one is one, two is two, three is three, four is four for me. Like this is just in order. Um, I love this movie. I think I have it as like three in the franchise. Maybe, maybe it's four, but I, I, I love the movie. I think it's awesome. And I think that it took again in 74 Texas Chainsaw Massacre takes risks with its depravity and its uh, originality and, and almost just kind of like, I don't know, just, just strangeness and, and it works and it pays off. And then in this film, it takes risks in totally different ways with, you know, whether it's 
the craziness of Chop Top's character or like, you know, the coming of age of Leatherface or the in your face comedy. And those risks pay off in this one, too. So, so far, Hooper was two for two when it came to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, in my opinion. But yeah, definitely a movie that took some time for me to get into. I never I never hated it. I do want to say that I did not walk away from my first watch and go, that sucked. Um, but it was just a lot to process. But I love the movie now. And it's a canon film, too. Don't forget, it's a canon mm-hmm. film. Yes. That was, um, they were, Golan and Globus were smart enough to to let Toby do whatever he wanted. They were, you know, they were very give and take with the money because apparently at that time, Cannon was starting to have like financial problems. So the budget got cut, then it got cut again. <laughs> so they kept, it was you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, you, the, you know, this, the, the original film was very 70s. You know, you got your hippie culture, you got the hippies talking about astrology and this and that and the other. And then two, 86, you go from hi- from hippies to yuppies. And the Chainsaw family, they're, they're um, you know, they're, uh, they've got their business now. They're, uh, <laughs> they're, uh, they're business people now. And uh, they're capitalists. They've gone from hippies to, to, to capitalists. And um, so, yeah, I think uh, uh, this, the spirit of the seventies is very much in, in the original film and the spirit of the eighties is very much in the second film. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that doesn't get talked about a lot either when you talk yeah. about that film. But I think, I think Toby definitely captured that spirit of the eighties uh, with, with part two. And the third act is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I love mm-hmm. the third act of this movie. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. But, yeah. What about you, Christian? Even though I think that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the greatest horror film ever made, like, TCM2, it's it's my Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, to me, when you when you watch a perfect horror comedy, I don't think you can do get anything anything better in terms of sheer entertainment i don't think you can beat films like tcm2 or return of the living dead for just rewatch value and you know just scene for scene man there are so many things about this film that i love so much and i try to process in my mind the it may be the inside jokes that toby was doing or maybe just pure accidents and i'm I'm putting my own thought process. One of the things that makes me laugh so hard and it's so subtle. So you got grandpa and he wins the chili contest and the broad comes up to give him the award and she goes to hug him. And this man who is literally feeding human flesh to people when she hugs him, he doesn't even want to touch her. He kind of does like this to her. Doesn't even put her hands on her. Like, ew, you're beneath me or you're gross. The irony of that always made me laugh my ass off. And I always got so grossed out by the overpour of the chili into the Texas trophy. Oh, yeah. That for some reason just, man, it rubbed me the wrong way. Well, because you know what it is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's disgusting. And it's, and it's just over. It looks like dog food pouring. It's just gross. Mm. And then he, he's holding the damn thing and the chili's spilling on him. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he's driving, his, he's got a goddamn motor home he's driving. And Bubba and, and Chop Top are calling him on the phone. In the, he's got a phone in, in the motor home in the middle of the 80s. Like, how much money is he making off of this human chili to afford? Like, having a phone in the 80s in a vehicle wasn't cheap. I mean, that cost mm-hmm. money back in... <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that just i die laughing and uh I, literally the scene where me and my brother we we when we call each other on the phone i'll I'll quote it to him like give those suckers a time or two there's gas in them and he'll die <laughs> laughing because the, 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 when he is holding the chainsaws you know i mean what the hell is going on on this movie set? You know, it, when years later, when I would learn about Canon films and become a very big fan of the producers and learning, like everything made so much sense because it didn't make any sense. When I learned about what Canon really was, it was, 
I, I wouldn't. I don't know. Gorilla, gorilla filmmaking doesn't even begin to describe Canon Pictures. It was literally not like nothing ever done. I mean, these guys were nuts, and they like these. You know, we watch we watch Italian horror movies and try to interpret what the hell they're trying to do because their culture is different. Sometimes when you watch demons or something, there's something that somebody may say or do. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense, but maybe it's just a mm -hmm. cultural thing. Well, here are two guys that aren't American trying to make American films, trying to translate to us. And sometimes they're just like, what the, what the hell? It didn't make it. What is, what is going on? This is insane. But then you got to throw drugs into the mix. Cause Toby has talked about, he has done a lot of blow. And during this time he was, I don't, I don't even think he was in the right state of mind. A guy knows when he made Life Force, uh, you know, he wouldn't have passed the piss test. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> but <laughs> I love this film. I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2's opening is some of the best 80s. I think it's one of the best 80s horror films, period. I, I, mm. I die on that hill. I think TCM 2 is one of the greatest 80s horror films, period. I love uh, Carolyn Williams, Dennis Hopper, even though he's... Uh, I know he was pretty resilient to the film after the fact. I don't think he spoke highly of it. Um, Toby no, Hooper, at the top of, yeah, T Toby Hooper at the top of his game. Um, I, I, I don't think Wes Craven or uh, even John Carpenter could rival what the hell Toby was capable of doing. I mean, Toby was. I mean, you look at that movie. Um, I don't know, man. TCM two is probably one of the greatest eighties horror films ever to me. That's my Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Like that's mine. You know, when I want to claim one, that's the one, man. That that's uh, mm -hmm. it's perfect movie to me. I just love mm -hmm. the humor, and I always felt like Rob Zombie really loved. He had to have really loved that film. Not not only because of putting Bill Mosley in the film, but I mean, look at the ending. That's the House of a Thousand Corpses lair. You know, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It looks the same. It's dimly lit with all these weird Mardi Gras colors in it. And it's, you know, gross, you know. Yeah, he's talked Just, very highly of this movie before. I, I've heard him. I've heard him in interviews talk because he was asked about Bill Mosley. Uh, I think it was with Devil's Rejects. And he was like, I mean, have you seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2? Like, he's fantastic in that movie. He steals the show. Like, he he makes that movie. He's like, that movie made me fall in love with Bill Mosley. And I told myself, I have to work with this dude. And like, so, yeah, I'm sure this is a movie that he's quite fond of. Uh, Piz, please uh, enlighten some of our younger viewers that may not be aware of how uh, Bill Mosley was in, how he got to be. It's, it's really a Cinderella story. Yeah, yeah. He, he, um, he made a short movie. I think, I think it was called Head Cheese, where he played the hitchhiker. And it somehow got into the hands of Toby Hooper and Toby liked it. And he, he got in touch with Bill Mosley and said, Hey, if we ever do a sequel, I'll keep you in mind. And sure enough, he did. They, they were, they were trying to get, um, I forget the guy's name who, who played um, the hitchhiker in the first film, but they just couldn't. Ed, Ed O'Neill. Uh, Ed Neal. Ed Neal. Ed Neal. Not O'Neill. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, they, but the, he wanted more money than they could, uh, provide him. So they kind of cre created this chop top character and hired Bill Mosley because Bill Mosley was not, I mean, that was his first gig and that's a pretty substantial role for a first timer. So, I mean, Toby really kind of went out on a limb to, to hire him for, to play chop top. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he nails that movie. He's so good in that movie. Um, yeah. I mean, can you Isn't imagine it? It, anybody else trying to play chop top at this point or, no. or, I mean, just think if, you know, I, I don't know. Isn't it funny how, you know, they struck gold like that a lot back in the day, you know, this is Bill Mosley's first gig. He gets a big role, kills it. You know, I, I always think about, a similar situation being like literally the happenstance of John Carpenter being like, well, Nick Castle, since you're going to be on set every day, why don't you just put this mask on and be the dude killing people? And he's like, okay. And he ends up killing it as Michael Myers. It's like the, yeah. you just strike gold when you don't even expect to like, and now mm. it seems like the producers and filmmakers overthink things sometimes. And like that's the name of an actor draws more weight than anything. Not if they're suitable for the role or not. So, yeah. 
that may be yeah. what's missing in, in a sense today is, you know, because I have no idea who the hell this guy is, I don't trust him. So I'm really going to be, they'll creep me out because I don't know them as a human being. So I can't, oh, he's acting so good. It's just, I don't know who the hell this weird dude is with, uh, with a, you know, a, a freaking uh, thing going against the skull and it's a plate, but I don't like this. He's crazy. This, this guy, because this is the only time I've ever seen Bill Mosley. So he's crazy. This isn't acting. This dude's a psychopath that, that, uh, you know, that element of mystery when you don't know who an actor is. I really get, I really get sucked into that, you know? So I love Good. seeing movies where I don't know who the actors are because I don't know who, but if I don't know you as a person, I can really fall into the the movie so to speak and who yeah. you who the character is well that that was probably a canon thing yeah. too uh, any anybody and you know if it was a studio movie they probably would have been like well you're this this is way too big a role and this is you know you gotta you know you need to cast you know i just you know somebody else who's got who's who's worked before who's got some credits to their name we can't trust a a newbie to 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 a role this size, but it was canon. They were like, whatever, you know, just finish the movie. Yeah. Make sure it's, it's super gory. Actually, yeah. And to add to what you're saying, um, on the Piz, let me, let me grab this real quick. Um, I know you've probably seen canon, the uh, electric boogaloo. Uh, mm -hmm. well, this documentary is called the go, go boys. Mm -hmm. And it's from, I don't Have you seen this? I've well, not seen that. No. Well, I, I won't. I'm, this is good because Manaham is in this and this is from his, this is his story, you know, uh -huh. of, of everything. It's not from an outside perspective going over the films and Manaham talked to, this is to, to, to talk about what you're saying. One of Canon's probably uh, biggest hits they ever did blood sport. Manaham and Jean-Claude Van Damme's in here. He says, you know, I, I went into Manaham's office I, I I reached out to him a couple of times. He used to eat at a restaurant where I was a waiter. And when he would come in, I would do splits and show him all the stuff I could do. And, you know, I was at my, my last job was at my, my breaking point. I was trying to make it as an actor. I'm doing all I can. And I would go to Manam's office for like the fifth time. And I snuck in when he wasn't looking. Cause he would be like making an appointment with me, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I, 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 I want to do this. He said he broke down in front of Manaham and Manaham's like, I make you a huge star. Uh, get me script. Get me script. Somebody get me script. And the blood sport script came to me. He goes, you will be blood. You will be Frank Dukes. You will be star. And I, he just, he, nobody knew who the hell Jean Claude was. He was no, he was a nobody. He could, he had barely had broken English. And look what Menahem did. Like, that's amazing. Like, you know, we'd have to do a, we have to do a, you know, we have to talk about Canon more one day. So much meat on mm. that, that bone of Canon, you know, great stuff. I, but. I wish, I wish there were people like them, you know, making movies today, maybe a little more slightly more structured so that they didn't, you know, crash and burn the way that Canon did. But there were a number of years there. I mean, Canon was, they were making some of the most entertaining movies, uh, movies that today are, you know, we just consider absolute classics. At the time, they were considered crap, <laughs> but I mean, now crap. they're considered full-on classics, <laughs> like Death Wish Three, man. <laughs> well, yeah, One all those Death Wish sequels. Yeah, all those Death Wish yep. sequels. I mean, all those uh, the, the 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 all those uh, Charles uh, Chuck Norris movies. Um, you know, the, the ton of the Van Damme stuff. I mean, yeah, gosh, their catalogs yeah. insane. It's incredible. So and the last thing I think we should mention, I mean, it's a mute point because he's a legend in the business. Everybody knows and loves him. But I mean, I, I, having Tom Savini do this movie, I mean, it's the middle of the 80s. If you're going to have anybody do your movie, I mean, I guess you either get Rick who you get Rick Baker or Tom Savini. So mm -hmm. but this movie is so much more up Tom Savini. Tom Savini's this like this movie is so his style. It's not even funny. And his stuff mm -hmm. still looks the best to me when i watch it especially when you see uh uh what, what's the what's the uh stretches dj partner's name uh oh um uh, lg I his name but lg oh dude yeah. he he was that poor bastard at the end of that yeah. movie yeah that, yeah that's the most painful looking thing i've ever seen oh it's yeah. gross yeah 
yeah there's there's some uh, awesome gore in uh in chainsaw too like when um when dennis hopper kicks the wall kicks that one wall uh-huh. and just all that guts and blood and pours out of that wall just like everywhere nasty nasty yeah. um yeah i mean i mean you know savini was um he 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 designed the mask there too. And the mask is just absolutely nasty. Um, just disgusting, but in such a great way. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to, uh, Texas chain, excuse me, Leatherface, the Texas chainsaw massacre part three. Now, Pidge, you alluded that you think this was the first one you saw growing up. I'm almost positive. This was the first one I saw. I was staying over at a buddy's house one night and we went to the video store and rented Chainsaw 3. And I don't remember, I don't know if we even finished it. The only thing that I remembered about the movie was the scene where like Leatherface catches the girl who's escaped from the house and pins her up against the tree and then just chainsaws the crap out of her. Like that was the only thing that I remembered about watching at that time. So I don't even, I don't even remember if we, cause I mean, we were probably like, I don't know, eating pizza and, you know, probably trying to find their, you know, his parents liquor cabinet and, you know, not, not even paying attention to, to the movie for the most part, but, um, we were, I, we were looking for the parents liquor cabinet and we did find it as I recall. <laughs> so that, um, that's probably, that might be part of the reason why I don't remember very much about the movie. Um, but I, that's the only thing I remember is like Leatherface catching the girl, pinning her up against the tree and then chainsawing her and like just blood going everywhere and thinking like, Whoa, what a way, what a way to go. Um, but yeah, years later, of course, revisited the movie and I mean, you can tell that even before I knew the, all the issues that happened behind the scenes, like you could tell there was just something kind of off about it. Um, and even though it's the quote unquote unrated version, it's still very choppy. Um, so I think that was, that was my initial reaction to the film, watching it through for the first time was, you know, there's, there's things about it that I like, uh, and, and I do like the movie overall, but you, like I could tell, like there was, there were issues here. There were some issues going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Nick, you remember Texas Chainsaw yeah. 3? <clears throat> This was the last one I ever saw, um, at least until like newer ones came out, like uh, Leatherface and uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. And uh, you know, I it's it's got it's got Aragorn in it. You know, that's great. It's got Joe Grizzly in it. You know, that's great. Um, and and there there really is some cool gore. Uh, the scene that you were referencing, Piz, I, I actually I really do enjoy that kill. That that's quite fun. Um, but yeah, it, I remember the first time I watched it, I loved the the case art. My buddy had it on DVD um, because the three of us, they were brothers and um, I was friends with both of them. And, uh, you know, Chris was Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy. He had all the movies, loved it. Tommy was Friday the 13th and I had all the movies and loved it. And I was Halloween. And, um, you know, one night Chris was like, like watch it. You, you haven't seen it. And I loved the cover, you know, it's got that like red and black kind of with the, uh, with the silhouette, almost like shadowy leather face with the chainsaw, long ass chainsaw uh, blade. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I like this. Um, and yeah, I mean, in retrospect, you, you understand it now that you know what was going on behind the scenes. Um, but at the, yeah, at the time watching it, I was like, man, this is like, a massive step down from the previous two movies. Like it wasn't bad. I didn't walk away from it. Like, dude, that sucked. No, but I was like that, that doesn't, it doesn't even almost feel the same um, as those two movies. So the, the, the charm wasn't there that I don't, I don't, I don't know. The, the lasting impact wasn't there for me. Um, but overall, I think it's okay. Uh, it has some redeeming qualities. It's got some, some good actors and, and, you know, I, I, I think it's okay, but it's probably one of the ones I revisit the least, um, which is funny because one of my least favorites, I probably watch more than this one, but I've gotten to the point now where I'm like old enough where I can do what I used to do when I was younger and watch 
uh, objectifiably bad movies and have a good time with them. Whereas I felt like I got to this phase in my early twenties and, and late teens where I, I, I was very uh, high and mighty. And I was like, I'm not going to waste my time on this garbage. And now it's <laughs> like, I'm back to whatever, like, screw it. Let's have fun. Um, um, ha have either of you seen the, the teaser trailer for part, no. for part three? Cause it, I, it's got I, the best teaser trailer. I've and got a story to go with that. Teaser. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, you go, Christian. That those are my thoughts. You know, I remember, you know, around this time, I think I've brought this guy up a number of times, but he was so instrumental in me finding a lot of these films. So my brother, uh, he had shown me a guy named James Rolfe, who I knew as the angry video game nerd, but he had a website called Cinemassacre, and I would frequent the site to watch the angry video game nerd. One of the funniest episodes he ever did was Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the Atari 2600. But I, I we, we saw that he reviewed some movies, and this was 2009, late 2009, early 2010, and we saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I didn't know there was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. This was news to me, and my brother was like, what is that? Oh my God, dude, is that text chainsaw three. So we clicked it and he starts talking about the movie and I told him, stop, I don't want to know any much more. And so we wanted to watch the movie. We go on Netflix. Of course it wasn't on Netflix. It just, it wasn't there. And that was it. There was no, okay, well let's check Hulu. I mean, none, none of that. So we went on YouTube to, cause dude, YouTube used to find movies on, on YouTube all the time. 10 years ago, mm -hmm. people would just upload stuff. And I remember yeah. we didn't find the movie, but we saw the trailer my brother said, you just watch the trailer, get a just get a glimpse of it. No lie. That teaser trailer, me and Trey, we watched that teaser trailer and we're standing up. I mean, we are so hyped out this one of the greatest teaser trailers ever. And that leather face, when it hits the screen, that white dude, one of literally two of the greatest teaser trailers I've ever seen is Texas Chainsaw Massacre three and Jason takes Manhattan. Those are amazing teaser trailers. Uh, and that one got me so hyped. I literally was like amped. I was pumped up. I couldn't wait to see this movie. So finally, we found the DVD at FYE. And honestly, we really enjoyed it. I, 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 I remember I didn't, I wasn't high on it in the sense of like, this is better than the original. But I th thought it was good. And I, we had a great time watching it and i would i would teeter totter with the film i would go up and down up and down and then finally i i watched it like about a year maybe not a year ago probably half a year ago and i just wanted to make a video to talk about it i was like guys like what's so bad about leatherface like let's be real with ourselves there are a lot of films we talk about that we really like and this and that but what what does texas chainsaw 3 do that's bad I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's as good as some of the other ones. If that's a crime, lock it up, but lock up a lot of the films we love. I think it's fun. I actually see the film as a mix between one and two. I think there is some dark stuff in that one. Like the opening where you see the police digging around that body. Oh, yeah. And it's they got yeah. gas masks on, and yeah. it's dark. And he's like, dude, it's, it's acid, whatever. That freaks me out. As a kid, that freaked me out the first time watching it is so dark and then the policeman saying don't you stop for no one or nobody shit i wanted to get up off the couch and just move because like i i believe that cop he wasn't bsing so i think that the movie has some really serious great moments and then it's hilarious obviously the bill mosley of this movie is the gas station attendant <laughs> that guy the it's always the bastard brother weirdo to Leatherface that is always a show stealer in these movies. <laughs> I loved him. The little don't tell me what I should do, cause A B motherfucker. Mm. What is he singing? <laughs> what is this? Is this in the script? You know what the hell is going on? Uh, uh, you know I love the look of this film, uh, even though it was shot in California. It does remind me I, when I was in the oil field, I used to go work in Midland, Odessa in Texas. And when I say it's flat desert, I mean, it reminded me of that. As a matter of fact, I think after I was there, I questioned, I didn't know that this film was filmed in Cali till a few years ago. 
I question, am I was TCM three filmed around here? Because I mean, it literally looks like that in Midland, Odessa. It's dirt, and then you'll see massive oil field trucks and you know Halliburton trucks for fracking. That's all it is out there. So, I, I even though it's it's not filmed in in Texas, I, I did think that that one had a cool look to it. I really I really dug it. Um, That's the no, crazy it's not thing as good about. As I was just going to say really quick to that. That's the crazy thing about California. You don't really understand until you go to California. When I visited California, that state is so massive. There are like microclimates throughout that state. There are so many different like just geographical like it's it's totally different. You're driving and it's like desert and then it's coastline and then it's city and then it's mountains and then it's desert. So like you can find a little of everything in california i feel like you could film any movie in california and sell it as any location if you went to the right spot so but i because i agree with what you said and, and i know that that's been a point of contention before people are like i've seen that as a complaint about this movie is like oh it doesn't feel or look like it was filmed in texas and i'm like what like what are you talking yes it does like i i never took that away from this movie i never had a problem with that so yeah. i don't know i mean i thought it was until i finally learned that it was cali but I like this movie a lot. One of the coolest things that I got from this movie watching it was the credits and um this this badass song by Laz Rocket called the song's called Leatherface. <laughs> and it's kick ass heavy metal at the end. I love it. I think that this film is a if I could word this in a weird way, I think this film is a really good all right film, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like it's yeah, really, it's a really good, oh, it's a really good, all right film. Jeff Burr I got his, his was handicapped. He hated New Line Cinema. There's even on the saw his the text this family portrait or whatever it's called. He talked about when he was done. He watched. He hates the movie. I can understand Jeff Burr because dude, he got mangled. His film he created got mangled. I mean, you. Know, you know, the, t the, the the chainsaw hit the film more than it hit anybody in the film. And he says he calls up somebody at New Line. I want my name off the effing movie. Take my name off the effing movie. He was pissed. But Jeff Burr, if you ever hear anything, if you ever hear this, you made an awesome film and you made a lot of fans, especially Texas Chainsaw fans, happy. Be proud of it. Screw New Line Cinema. Why do you buy a why do you buy the piss? Why do you buy the rights to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre and then handicap the director and say, don't do that, don't do that? What the hell's going on here? Well, I mean, it, it was one of those movies that started with the release date. They didn't have a script, they didn't have it was a it was a release date. So they started with a countdown. And that's and new line cinema for you. Best way to start. And so I, I think I think Chainsaw 3. With a little more time, a little more work put into the script, a little more time for uh, for shooting the film, it could have been more than just a really okay movie. It could have been much better. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were racing against a, a timeline, and even even though they were, and even though they made the movie super quick, they still had to postpone the release. I mean, they had such a tight you know, timeline to shoot yep. that film. And and Jeff yeah. Burr was actually, he was, Jeff Burr was, they were so tight on the time. At one point, Jeff Burr was fired. Yeah. At one point, Jeff Burr just said, I can't, you know, we, you know, you got to do this this way or what. I, I forget what the, what the issue was. He was like, I can't do it. And they said, well, you're fired. And he goes, okay, bye. And like the next day, cause they couldn't find in, they'd, According to uh, the, the lore, they basically interviewed every director that like today, you know, um, Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson was offered it. He said, no, um, I've heard Hell that Gilman no. del Toro was offered it. He said, no, um, I don't know. So they, they go down this list of all these great directors today who we consider great directors today. And even then at that time, when they're struggling up and coming directors who need a job, they're like, I'm not going anywhere near that mess. So they couldn't find anybody to fill in for him. So like the next day they hired him back on. So he was fired and hired within 24 hours. Amazing. And like when he, when he was first hired on, I believe he said he was hired on, on like a Friday and he started shooting on like the following Monday or Tuesday. Jesus. So, 
the 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 script was already written the movie was already cast the locations were already scouted the sets were already built literally at that point he's there to make to, to say action and cut it's so, amazing with all of those factors working against burr and working against the film that it actually turned out as decent as it did yeah because, i mean really it is yeah it, it's really, that, that it kind of got the jason x thing disaster. going on man yeah 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 that's a recipe for I, you gotta look at it you 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 really do have to look at it at look what he did with nothing as opposed to what it could I mean, of course you could always look at what it could have been and that's always the case with every movie but i mean look at what that son of a bitch did i mean jeff burr will always be somebody i sing his praises of always i think he is awesome and he makes great fun movies like this and Pumpkinhead too. Jeff Burr is awesome. I think he's a great director who knows who his audience is too, which is something you don't see a lot with genre directors in horror. His his stepfather sequels pretty darn good too. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So uh well speaking of one of the most bizarre well, actually, <laughs> this isn't really speaking of, but I don't I I mean I've got to give this film a, a weird intro. Um uh, Texas Chainsaw and Massacre of the Next Generation is one of the most insane. I'd like to just start if that's fine. I, I, I want to just start with this one. Texas Chainsaw of the Next Generation is one of the most disturbing, bizarre films I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, when I met my wife, this was her Texas Chainsaw. And I couldn't understand that. I remember watching this, uh, the family portrait documentary. After seeing one, two, and three, and the remake, and and I had seen, uh, we'll talk more about these down the road when we do, you know, the the latter films. But I had seen basically all of them at, uh, except this one. So I'm like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation. I bring this up to my wife. She goes, "That's the only one my family's seen." I was like, "What are you talking about?" She goes, "Dude, it, she's all it did was play on HBO in the late '90s. That's all that was on HBO." <laughs> And so I was like, wow, I was like, well, what is the film like? And I had to ask my wife. She goes, well, uh, I don't it's really weird. I, you know, my wife doesn't <laughs> sell anything. I'm like, OK, I go to Books a Million. I scour the used DVDs, not looking for next generation. There's no way in hell I'm going to find this DVD because, you know, it came out in the early. two. I think it came out in 03, right around when the remake came out and they pushed a DVD out of it. And I found it. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I watched this film and I was just, my jaw was hitting the floor. I mean, I, at first I'm like, this seems really cheap and bad, but then McConaughey is shocking. I mean, he really disturbs me. The scene where he grabs the shotgun from the girl and he's got it in his mouth, like shoot me, bitch, shoot me. And his veins are popping out of his head. I, I will, I will not stand for people saying that this movie is, is, has no merit. I won't stand for it. I mean, I will draw my foot in the sand and cross, say, you cannot watch that film and tell me McConaughey is not a psychopath. I, I love him in this film so much. It's one of the best, in my opinion, it's one of the best performances in the franchise, period. I, I, my, I will firmly plant my feet in the sand with that. He is psychotic in this movie. And then what the hell is going The Illuminati? What the hell is I, I swear to God, I thought there was a Hellraiser crossover coming because I, I, I it seriously looked like a Cenobite. I was like, what is on this? What is that? I still don't know. I watch documentaries about the film. I still don't know. I have no idea what the hell is going on with this film. The ending of this film, an airplane comes down and hits Leatherface in the goddamn head. There, This movie certainly is not a masterpiece in in this in the way Godfather is or the way uh rocky is or uh, uh halloween even but this is a film when you see it you will never forget it and for that the texas chainsaw massacre next generation is one of my favorites in the franchise i love it to death i have nothing but great memories about this film i think it is so insane i i, I love it i love the next generation mcconaughey is a god in this film i love i just you know, I'm probably going to be the most positive about this, and I won't argue criticism, but I will not stand for, for people saying McConaughey is not awesome. That's where the only place I'm drawing my foot in the sand. So there we go. I'm done. Piz, you want to what do you what do you think about next gen? I remember seeing the trailer for the first time. Um 
it, it, it played before some some movie I'd rented. I don't remember the movie, <laughs> but I remember seeing the trailer and thinking, "Oh my god!" If Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger are in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, this has to be like this has to be a great freaking movie. <laughs> I had no idea <laughs> that it was. You know, this was after they were famous. Of course, I had no idea the movie was made before they were famous. But I'm going like if Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey are in this movie. My God, this has to be incredible. And I mean, I recognized you know the guy, um, the guy who directed the film as being, you know, he was integral in the first film. I can't remember what's his name. Kim um, Hinkle. Kim Hinkle. Yes. But I recognized his name and I was like, oh my God, you know, he's directing Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger are starring. This has to be incredible. And I thought the trailer looked phenomenal. The trailer was a good trailer, as I recall. Um, <laughs> and then I remember sitting in, Eng I was sitting in science class and there was a newspaper in science class. And I was flipping through this newspaper and there was a review of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation in it. <laughs> and I went, oh my God. So, and it was, it destroyed the movie, <laughs> just absolutely gutted the movie. It explained that it was made before Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey were famous. It was originally called the return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre right. that um, Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey's people were, were suing the makers of the film to try and stop them from putting it out. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God, I so gotta I see this. <laughs> I, yeah, part of me was like, I've got to see this. Another part of me was like, maybe it's not going to be that great. Um, but yeah, when you watch it for the first time, it is, um, it's an acid trip in a different way than the second film's an acid trip. I, and I mean, again, you, you, when I think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation, it's all Matthew McConaughey because he's just so over the top and intense and, out of his gourd in that movie. Leatherface takes a back seat. Everybody, every other character. I mean, the, the Leatherface isn't the main villain in the film. It's it's what's his name? Merle or something like that. Is yeah. it Merle? I think, okay. I think I think so. Yeah, and he's he's so crazed. And then the thing with his leg and the remote controls, like where does that where does where do you, where do these ideas come from? The leg and the remote controls and and the plane coming down at the end and hitting him like who's where'd the plane come from? What's with the plane? The thing with the Illuminati and the guy with the nipples all over him, like, like the pierced, there were pierced nipples all over him, all around him. Like yeah. what is does, this? Where does he this was, a, he from? was edgy, man. That was disturbing. Yeah. I mean, truly disturbing. The, the yeah. like the Illuminati guy. Yeah. Like where's this, where does, where do these ideas come from? But like, they're not even, they're not even cannibals in this movie. They're eating pizza. They're just, they're just <laughs> psychopaths. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, I, it, it's, it's a movie that just kind of washes over. I think the, the, as speechless as I was after watching part two for the first time, I mean, multiply that by a, a hundred. It was how I was speechless I was after watching the next generation. I, um, I was like, yeah, this is, this is bad, <laughs> but I was like, there's just so much going on in it. That's off the wall. And so zany. It's like, I've got to rewatch this thing. Yeah. So I almost don't even think of it as a Texas chainsaw massacre movie. Cause there's so little leather face in it. And there's, you know, it's just, it, it's like, it's a, I don't know. It's uh I, I enjoy it. I find, <laughs> I find it really entertaining. But it's just, it's one of those movies, man. Like, what were they smoking? What were they snorting? What were they imbibing? There was a lot. I mean, goodness gracious. So, I, and I actually would like to, I'd like to see the return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre cut. Um, Because Joe Bob gave it like four stars. Said it was the best horror movie of the 90s or whatever. I don't know. Maybe he was yeah. a little, maybe he'd been smoking and imbibing <laughs> on something too. I don't know. But um, that, got the, the, the next generation. Did. Yeah. I've got the Go Japan ahead. laser disc, which what it's it is the return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was released before they recut the film. And the Blu-ray from Scream Factory has the uncut version. 
it's it's the return okay. of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, it's, it's way I... better. It's way better of a cut of a movie. Uh, I mean, a lot of the insanity is still in the theatrical cut because McConaughey's. It, 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 you you but can't it, work around that. No. I mean, it's a better cut. It is certainly a better cut, but still, the theatrical cut still gets it gets the job done. I mean, it really does. The theatrical cut still gets the job done, which I don't know why it's called a theatrical cut, because like I don't even think that really hit theaters much at all. I mean, that's just what the, that DVD that came out. It was recut. That film was recut for that DVD. I guess because they were like, well, that we got to cut some of this stuff out for Matt. Matthew, I, I don't, I, you know, somebody, somebody might buy this, you know, we got to, you know, <laughs> but. but they did both of, both of their people sued to try and get the movie stopped from being released. Oh yeah. Um, it was, it was a big which, thing. It was a big thing. Which is funny because both of them have talked about the movie since uh, publicly and like they, they both, it, I mean, they, they don't speak ill of it, but even when Scream Factory was releasing that Blu-ray, the slipcase the artwork had both of their faces on it and then something happened and they had to change the artwork and remove their faces from the artwork. So still there's something weird going on where like, you know, you can release this weird, movie. Yeah. You just can't promote it. You can't promote those two as part of it or something. I, I don't know. It's weird. Something, something in my mind says it's management because McConaughey He's a Texan. I mean, he he's talked about I found it's, interviews of him talking about the film. Dude, he's a down ass mf -er. McConaughey is cool as hell. I mean, he's a Texan. I don't think it's him. Mm. I, I really think that his management it's, it's, were it's like, the, yeah, it's this it's, is it's our breadwinner. We have got to protect him. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's Which, the man. Come on, man. Yeah, well, it, well Renee go. Zellweger, I mean, she even talked about it on, on Inside the Actor Studio. Right. So yeah, it's it's not like they refuse to talk about it or they speak real they speak ill of it. <laughs> they do talk about it and they don't speak ill of it, but yeah, you just can't put their image on anything that promotes it or something. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. All right, Nick. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm not gonna be one of those people that drags this movie, you know, through the mud. I oh, think that no, it, because the first time I watched it, I was really pissed off. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was all over the place. I thought that it, it's confusing in the sense that you're, it's, you know, you, you the title, the billing of it doesn't really come across as like a soft reboot slash remake, but that is what it is. Um You've got these two very well-known actors, at least now. I guess at the time they weren't yet, so at the time you wouldn't have gone, you wouldn't have expected much from them. But by the time I saw it, I was like, "Really? These two are in this? Like what?" Um, yeah, I just didn't like it. And then, um, you know, time went on, and um, I wa I watched it more and more. And you know, I need to do a re visit to some of these movies in the franchise that I haven't watched in a while, namely Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw 3D. Cause I initially thought Texas Chainsaw Massacre Gen the next generation was my least favorite, but I really don't think it would be anymore. Um, because you know, for the, some of the things you guys said, like, look, say what you will about the movie, some of the weird stuff that doesn't really make sense. Uh, it's never explained. It's zany. It's all over the place. McConaughey is awesome in the movie like that's a dude i would never want to run into hell like, no hell ever. no <laughs> um you know that dude has acting chops you knew it from this movie that guy like that guy is an actor um but you know i i feel like this movie does have merit to exist um whereas now as i look back on the some of the newer movies and we'll talk about this you know in a later episode but you know you start to think like did leatherface from 2017 have a reason to exist no did texas chainsaw 3d really have a reason to exist no uh so i feel like you know years ago i was harder on this movie but as we've gotten some subpar sequels and prequels and stuff i'm like it's really not that bad like it, it, in comparison it's really not that bad so as weird as it is it's endearing in a way uh, and believe it or not, it's one of the ones I've seen the most. Um, this was the movie when I would spend the night at Tommy and Chris's house. 
uh, and I would sleep on the floor of Chris's room. And when we were going to bed, it'd be like, all right, what movie are we watching? Let's put in the next generation. And we would fall asleep to the next generation every single night. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's got charm to it. So no, I won't, I won't drag it over the coals. I, I'm not going to do that. It's, it, it is, it, I don't need to talk about its issues. We we've talked about its issues. Uh, but it's, it's charming. It's charming. I mean, shit, dude. I, I love Halloween five. Like what, what moral, like, like what I'm, am I going to get on my soapbox and talk about how this movie sucks, but Halloween five is a masterpiece. Like, no, no. You know, so, you know, make no mistake. Look, look, I know that you weren't a big fan of this movie. We've talked about this on one of our previous franchise rankings, which yeah. you're all, you always, I always want you to be dead honest on here. I don't want you to agree with me or I want you to agree with his. I don't want to agree with his on everything. I feel like, yeah, and I feel like I am. I, you know, I can, I could nitpick this movie to death if I wanted to. I think that there are so many things that don't make sense that are unexplained, that are cringy at times, but you have to take into account the time that, that this movie came out, the budget. You have to think about the fact that it was kind of like a remake but you didn't really know it was going into it. There's a lot of factors that were against this movie. So as you get older, you start to realize like it really isn't as bad as it seemed. So let me ask you, let me piss you first. I'm, I'm talking to you and all of a sudden mid conversation, I say that I want to know your response. Yeah, I never saw that next generation one, man. Like I saw a few other ones. Some people told me skip it. So I, do I need to watch that one? I, I would yes, yes. <laughs> I would say yes. I would say yes. I, and and I would say don't don't read anything about it. Don't look into it. Don't research it. Go into it blind. Nick, I, now if I come to you and I'm like. Hey, dude, I've never seen this movie. Like, I, I've seen a lot of them. I like some. Of, I don't know, dude. Somebody said skip the next gen. They said it was pretty bad. I don't know. Should I, should I watch that one? Like, honestly, no bullshit. I'm, no, I'm really I, I put would... yourself in this situation. Okay. I would say, no, you don't need to watch this movie. You might be better off having never watched this movie because you're going to walk away from this movie going, what the hell did I just watch? But I think you should watch this movie. Because there are just some off the rails, batshit crazy things about this movie where if you can go into it not expecting anything, I think you'll walk away going like, yeah, objectively, it's not a good movie, but I'll be damned if I didn't have fun. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you're not going to put this movie up for best picture. But you're not going to walk away from the movie and be like, well, that was boring. That sucked. Like, no, it, it, it's fun. I mean, shit, I'm starting to get a new appreciation for resurrection with, from Christian because we watched, we did a commentary for it. And it's just, it's so bad at times. It's fun. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I would say you don't need to watch it. it it's not going to change. You, oh, well, I need to see it if I'm going to understand this movie or that. No, you don't need to see it, but you probably should watch it. So. It takes it takes place. I mean, really, you could look at the first four Texas Chainsaw Massacre films, and they each take place in their own little universe. Part yeah. four takes place in a universe far, far beyond all the other universe. Yes, it's a universe <laughs> all on its own. But like, you can almost, you know, there's, yeah. I mean, they they all kind of take place in their own little universe. Like, I can't. There's no other franchise where uh, you, you know you you have you know you you have other entries in where a sequel like, doesn't feel like a true sequel. Exactly, exactly. Yep. With but with Chainsaw, it's like every movie feels like it's in its own universe. I mean, even the remake in the beginning, like they have right. returning characters, but I feel like the vibes from I both of those movies are so Just, different. So, and the mm -hmm. color palettes of those two. Yes. One of them is green and one of them is like a burnt orange. Like I'm they're, excited they're... to talk about the, the back half of this. And I think that we should do that when this new one comes out. Because if I'm not mistaken, we... that comes out in February. So I think Early that we theory. should watch that one. And then we should hit the last five. 
Well, just franchise. so long that Piz doesn't raise his rates, he'll be back. You know, yeah. Okay. If not, we'll have yeah. to get we'll have to get the second best thing, which we'll figure something out. But he well, hasn't I didn't raised Venmo his price him last yet. time, and I didn't Venmo him last time. He showed up at my house, but you know, that's right. I won't, that's I won't right. tell you guys what happened. You know, it was it was scary, but yeah. I mean, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. I I think that because we'll, we'll get into it at a later date. But man, that remake, that remake is really damn good. Like really good for a remake. So mm-hmm. I I'm excited for that. But I have to watch Leatherface again if I'm gonna if if we're gonna tackle that. And uh, I own that one. And uh, I you know I remember when it came I out. Too. I thought this really isn't that bad. And then the horror community has really like no that movie sucks. And then I watched it again and again. And every time I watch it, I'm like, ah, oh, really isn't <laughs> that good, is it? I've been pretty <laughs> vocal really about not- that one too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the only one I would need to rewatch well, look, would be the beginning. That's a good one. I like the beginning. That's my third favorite, Piz. I love that's the my beginning. third. That's sure is my third favorite in the entire franchise. Listen, we need to get we need to wrap this up. I know Nick Nick has to, has to get going. Piz, you've had a you've had a pretty big smile on talking. What does what does this franchise do that no other franchise does? I'm talking. What does this one do that Jason doesn't do or Michael? What do you get? from this series cannibalism <laughs> um i don't know that's a good question I, I i guess i'd have to go back to my you know each one each one is different vastly different really um like i said they 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 have that they they take place in their own little universe kind of kind of feel about them one and two are even though they have similar they've got you know some same characters spilling over they're just vastly different. Three is close to one in a lot of ways, but you know, it, 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 it feels like it takes place on its own little universe. And, and, and four, like I said, it takes yeah. place in a universe beyond all other universes. So I think in that's the back corner down the hall to the left. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I, th- I think that's what I kind of take away from the, the chainsaw films is that each one of them is so vastly different from the one that, uh, from, from the one that it follows, especially these first four. Yeah. What a, what a, sh- what an insane, you know, first four movies in a series. I don't, mm-hmm. There's nothing like that. I mean, nothing tonally, like these first four in comparison to the other are all it's schizophrenic. It's yes. it's so schizophrenic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, look, Piz, this was my idea, but you're going to be the judge. You know, if we come back down the road and we we talk about the rest of these series, I think it would be called the buzz is back. And I think that this is the saw is family for part one. What do you think? You're going to be the sure. That the sounds good to ball. me. That sounds good. You to like me. it. Mm hmm. All right, Piz. You want to give people the last word? I always like it giving you giving you the last word on the show. Just what sure. do you want to tell the people, whether it be Texas Chainsaw or whatever? At the end of the year, what what are your words for the for the viewers? Well, I would say probably when when you think about the major franchises, Texas Chainsaw Massacre seems to be the one that kind of gets the least love, and I think that's because you know. <clears throat> I think that's because it is, it is very different. The first film is, is very different from like a Friday the 13th or a Halloween or something like that. Um, but I, you know, I would, I would just say, ch- I, watch the first film, go and check it out, watch it. Um, don't read anything about it. Go into it blind and uh, just, you know, let it uh, immerse yourself in it because it is an immersive experience. Um, and really we're talking about a franchise that didn't really need to be a franchise. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, Leatherface would be more well-known that, that, that the, the, the series would be far more well-known if they had capitalized early on and just started churning out these sequels. But really, I mean, Chainsaw didn't need a sequel. And, and I think that's part of the reason why these first four movies really feel like they take place in their own universe, because the, the original film had a definitive beginning and end. And um, really, I think the, the two, three and four kind of have their own definitive beginnings and ends also. But um, I don't know, I, I, I even though I like the sequels, part of me kind of wishes that I don't know. 
they weren't necessary the way that you could uh, how to put this Friday the 13th was born for a sequel Halloween was born for a sequel not Real Elm Street was born for a sequel Chainsaw really wasn't yet there's never been a part three mm -hmm. there's truly yeah. never been every single Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been Halloween 2018 ing since 1986 that's that's kind of true <laughs> Yeah, that's yep. kind of every movie is a sequel to the first movie, including including the one, one coming <laughs> out. But Piz, yep. look, man, really quick, we got it. We got. We really do have to wrap up. Am I wrong for being excited? Whether this movie's going to be good, bad, or not, am I wrong for being excited to to hear that chainsaw crank up one more time in a couple months? I, I mean, I'm I'm excited. Oh uh, no, I mean you're 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 not wrong at all. I mean, I'm I want to watch the movie, but I I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to go into it with any expectations whatsoever. Uh, and I I almost feel like when it comes to guys like us, you know, we go into these new, you know, the 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 new films with maybe our expectations are maybe a little too high. We're asking too much of right. the thirteenth film in a series. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm gonna go into this new chainsaw movie with no expectations and just hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what made me walk away from the theater with Halloween 2018 disappointed because I went in expecting this just insanely incredible return and i didn't feel like i got that so as much as i have you know info on this new tcm movie that i am very weary about no you're not wrong in being excited because you never know when these long-running franchises are just going to be done and if this is the last time you get to see leatherface crank up the chainsaw and you know eviscerate people enjoy, I it, enjoy it yeah enjoy it let's end it right there with that just get ready to hear that chainsaw crank up once again and the buzz savor is back. it. Savor <clears throat> it. Thank you guys for watching this episode of the You Need a Horror Podcast. Thank you, Piz, for returning yet again. And Nick, glad to have you back. Feels like it's been a while. Great episode. Great times. We love y'all. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror Podcast. You need it. We got it. Thank you for listening.